what would you go? <clears throat> what would be your guys's approach on hunting small blocks of timber? Most of the places I hunt uh, and places around it are small chunks under ten acres. For bow hunting, I'm assuming. Yeah, I, I'm gonna assume for bow hunting. Yeah, I, I, he's probably talking about bow hunting. You know, you got to be careful with the small blocks, how you enter them and stuff like that. I mean, uh, small square blocks, you're bedding them a little different. I mean, if they got inter internal edges, great. But if they're just blocks of standing timber that's pretty uh, contagious of the same stuff, they will tend to bed to the downwind side. They'll watch the opening with the wind to their back and they'll smell the woods. And uh, when they do that, most people will, will tend to want to hunt from the downwind side so that their wind don't blow in the woods and they don't realize they're walking in on the days that the bucks are watching them. So they bet, they, they bet on edge, you know. So you do have to be careful about how you go about that. I would tend to um, hunt those smaller blocks more often when the wind is to the deer's advantage, not mine, because that'll put them on the other side of the block and I'll use an angle of the wind or a crosswind or something to hunt them when they come back through to where they're headed to the food or whatever. Um, like a lot of guys will put a, um, you know, cameras on the edge of those woods and they'll watch that deer come out all the time. And, you know, what they're not realizing is that deer, when they're waiting for that wind, and they go in there when the wind is right for them, that deer's right there uh, watching them, you know? Yeah. yeah. Something else to like think about on small properties is, uh, if you're talking under 10 acres, like you got to make sure you're on the right property too, because you can have a 10 acre piece that's not going to hold deer, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how, you know, I don't know your, your story there, Jesse, but, um, if you have access to many of them, you want to make sure you're on the right uh, one on the right one. Yeah. I tend to like to sit back and watch them once too, and just see what comes out because when you go in there, you kind of taint them for a while, but if you just watch them, you see what happens. You see how the deer come out. Like if, the, like if you think they're bedding on the downwind side and you're having a hard time accessing that, just watching them once, they'll they'll let their flaws come out. They'll be like, oh, look where he's going. Look what he's doing. Oh, I could do this or I could do that or I could get into this gap here and I could get under this hill. He wouldn't be able to see me. And maybe I can only get a few feet off the ground, but I could get right there. So you sit back and you watch them. And, and um, particular deer, deer will have a tendency to come out and do the same things the next day they come out yeah so just like when you when you walk through a wood lot you know um when you enter a woods and you walk through you tend to take the same trail you did the last time when you go through that section yeah not every deer will do that not every person that goes through that woods will walk through the same spot either you do because that's the way you learn to go through that woods and deer will have the same kind of tendency to go through a piece of cover the same way the next time they go through it so if you sit back and watch them and observe them a time or two it, it, that can be pretty helpful. Hey everybody, if you like the channel, make sure you subscribe right here. And if you like the clips, I got two more options for you. Two options right here. Subscribe right here. See you guys.